In this section, we have learned about decorators in great detail. And we learned that a decorator is nothing but a function. Now, a function can also return some value. Right. That means our decorators can also return some value. So in this lecture, we are going to learn what are the different types of values we can return from different types of decorators. We have already returned some values from our decorator functions in our previous lectures. But the main thing which I'm going to focus in this lecture is from a class decorator, we can modify the class on which we have used the decorator and we can return the modified class, which will replace the existing class. So let's go to VS Code and let's try to understand this concept. So here, if I scroll up in the previous lecture, when we talked about accessor decorators and property decorators, so here we talked about accessor decorator and from here you see this accessor decorator it is going to receive three parameters the target parameter the name of the accessor on which we have used the accessor decorator and the property descriptor so from an accessor decorator the decorator which we are going to use on an accessor on a getter and setter from that decorator what we can do is we can modify this descriptor and we can return the modified descriptor like we are doing here okay if i scroll up and here we talked about property decorator so there what we are doing is from the property decorator first of all in a property decorator we are going to receive the target and the property name and from there also we can return some value like for example from here we are returning an object with getter and setter okay so we can return something like that in the same way if i scroll down we talked about method and parameter decorator so for example here so for a method decorator also this is the method decorator for the method decorator also we are going to receive the target we are going to receive the method name and we are going to receive the property descriptor which is going to store the definition of this function the get and set etc so from a method decorator also we can modify this descriptor and we can return the modified descriptor okay and when we use a decorator on a class for a class decorator we are simply going to receive the target this target will be assigned with the function constructor with the class on which we have used the class decorator right so in a class decorator what we can do is we can modify that class and we can return the modified class and that modified class will replace the existing class on which we have used the class decorator and this is what we are going to understand in this lecture and for that i have created a very simple class called person now what i am going to do is i am going to create a decorator and i'll call it maybe logger okay and i am going to decorate this person class with logger decorator now when we have decorated this person class with this logger decorator in that case this logger function it is going to receive the target and this target will be nothing but the function constructor so we have learned that behind the scenes a class is nothing but a function constructor so this target is going to receive a reference to that function constructor it is going to receive a reference to this person class now inside this decorator function we are going to modify this class and how we are going to modify this class so what we are going to do is first of all we are going to create a new class for that i'm going to use the class keyword let's call this class maybe logging class okay and this class must extend this target class the class which we are going to receive for this target parameter so for this target we are going to receive this person class right so this logging class it must extend this person class so for that we will say extends and here I'm not going to use the person class name. Instead, I'm going to use target because we might want to use this logger decorator on other classes also, right? So here we want to extend the class on which we have used this logger decorator. In this example, we have used this logger decorator only on the person class. So for this target, we are going to receive person class. So this logging class, which we are going to create now, it must extend this target, okay? After that, let's use a set of curly braces. Now here we have an error and it says type function is not a constructor function type. 
okay so when we specify the type as function that does not mean that that function is a constructor function that function can also be a normal function so here instead of specifying the type as function what we are going to do is we are going to specify the target as new and then a function definition so for that i'm going to use this arrow function syntax something like this and now you will see that that error is gone and this function constructor it might take some arguments so for that i can specify args like this and after that let's specify the type so the type can be any so basically a function constructor can also take some parameters so those parameters i'm specifying using this args that's it all right now for this logging class first of all we are going to create a constructor okay and in this constructor what we are going to do is we are going to call the constructor of the parent class so as you can see this logging class is inheriting from the target this target can be any class to which we have decorated this logger decorator in this case we have decorated it with person decorator so from this constructor we are going to call the constructor of this person class for that i can use this super keyword now when we are calling this super keyword you see the constructor of this person class is going to take some parameters in this case it is going to take a value for the name so here we also need to pass that value so that we are going to receive in this args so i am simply going to pass this args to the constructor of the parent class and here it should be an array of any type because this args it can store multiple arguments okay and here we have this error because it cannot find args so that's because to this constructor of this logging class there also we need to specify those arguments so i'm going to specify it here also and its type will be array of any type okay and inside this class i'm also going to create a static property i'll call it maybe company which is going to be of type string and to that i'm going to assign a company name something like this and here i'm also going to create a method but before that in the constructor i'm going to log a console dot log message and here let's simply say creating a new logging class instance all right and then if we want we can also go ahead and we can add some methods here but i'm not going to do that finally once this class is created we need to return that class okay so from this logger decorator we have created a class now we are going to return that class so i'm going to return logging class and now what it will do is since we have decorated this person class with this logger decorator this logger decorator it is going to return a new class and this class will replace this person class okay and here we have this error because we need to specify that this logger function it is going to return a value so for now i'll set the type as any the return type as any okay but you can also specify the type as the function constructor because from here we are returning a function constructor this logging class is nothing but a function constructor right so we can also specify the function constructor here but to keep things simple i will set it as any and now let's go ahead and let's create an instance of this person class okay and when we are calling the constructor of this person class let's pass a value for the name let's say john and before that let me comment this instance creation and let me save the changes so you see nothing has been logged here because inside this logger function what we are doing is we are creating a class and we are returning that class so this logger decorator has already been executed it has created a class and it has returned that class and that class has replaced this person class so now if i try to create an instance of this person class if i save the changes you'll see we have a message creating a new logging class instance because this person class is now replaced with this logging class okay and in the constructor of that we have this message creating a new logging class instance 
Let's also go ahead and let's try to log P. If I save the changes, you can see that when we are logging P, an instance of logging class has been logged. It is not saying that this object here, it is an instance of person class. Instead, it says it is an instance of logging class. Because as I mentioned, since we have used this logger decorator on this person class, and this logger decorator is returning a new class, that new class will replace this class. Okay, so whatever instance we will create of this person class, that will be actually an instance of logging class. And if I expand this logging class, there we have this name property. And if I expand the prototype, we should have a company property as well. So here you can see we have the company property which is set to Google and it is a static property. All right, so in this way, from a class decorator, we can modify the existing class on which we have used that decorator and we can return a modified class which will replace the class on which we have used that decorator. So this is also possible. And apart from a class we can also return the property descriptor so we can modify the property descriptor for a method decorator and accessor decorator and we can return that modified property descriptor from a method decorator and from an accessor decorator and we rarely return anything from a property decorator and a parameter decorator we have seen an example where we returned some value from a property decorator. So that is possible, but we usually don't do that. We usually don't return a value from property decorator as well as parameter decorator. Okay, but for the access decorator, there we receive a property descriptor object. So we can modify that object and we can return that modified descriptor. And for the method descriptor also, we receive a property descriptor. So we can modify the property descriptor of the method decorator and return the modified descriptor. So that is also possible. And that is something we actually do when working with method decorators. Okay. So this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.